Hello. Hey, buddy. Hey, what's going down, bud? Not much, man. We're doing this or what? Yeah, let's throw it down. Could you pick me up? Yep, see you in 10 minutes. We'll see you in a bit. Let's go to the McDonald's house. Let's go to the McDonald's. Let's go to the McDonald's house and play some songs. Let's go to the McDonald's house. Let's go to the McDonald's. Let's go to the McDonald's house and play some songs. Thanks, everybody.
shaved up here for the playoffs but uh, you know maybe if I could go back in time I would change the fact that I shaved you know who knows and that's kind of what I'm getting at it's what I want to talk today talk about today and not just time travel I want to talk about John Teeter that guy's dead I got a knife on the go. Uh, John Teeter uh, is a guy that appeared on internet web forums kind of like uh, message boards basically uh, in the year 2000, starts firing off a bunch of messages saying that he's a time traveler from the year 2036. And everybody's at first like, you know, well, yeah, this guy's loony. Cause, I mean, there's a lot of loony people out there, you know, lurking on the internet, creeps. So basically, uh, John Teeter, you know, he's, he's, he's on the internet. He says, hey, I'm a time traveler. I'm from the future. Any questions you have, you know, I'm kind of just doing this for fun. I don't... He didn't say that he had to talk to the public or anything, he just said he was doing it more for his entertainment. Um, so people start firing him questions, you know, and uh, his reason for coming back uh, in time is that he was a soldier from the year 2036. I know it sounds a little, little bit like Terminator 2, John Connor, but uh, his name's John Teeter. And uh, he went back, he got sent back to the year 1975 to obtain one of the f world's first personal computers, the IBM 5100. He said he needed it because it had the ability to hook up into any mainframe of any IBM computer, which was in the future. IBM's huge. And IBM kind of went off the chart lately. It's like, where's IBM? Guess what? They're making super supercomputers. You know what I mean? It's like, come on. This guy's insane. So basically this old model, you hook it up to a computer and you can fix any problems. You can reprogram. It reads any type of IBM code. And after, everybody's kind of like, yeah, this guy's just some computer science nerd, you know what I mean? But then, of course, comes forth a, uh, an engineer from IBM who says, hey, there's probably five to ten people in the world that know about the fact that the IBM 5100 can reprogram and read any type of IBM or computer programming language. Supposedly, he completes his mission there. 75 and then he stops in the year 2000 on his way back home to 2036 he stops in 2000 2001 and he's just kind of probably doing something else and dicking around on the internet so people say you know like why why would he stop in 2000 why, why wouldn't he just do what he's doing and go home but I mean just because you go to the strip club and you come home with milk you know that doesn't mean that the strip club sells milk right I mean, maybe some do. Everybody thinks he's loony. Nobody pays any attention to the guy. And then in the 2000, he posts about how, starts talking about how his time machine works and time travel and the science behind it. And this is where it starts to get a little bit weird. Um, so he basically says in the year 2000 that his time machine runs off basically like kind of a anti-gravity kind of thing, which basically he says, gets a jump start from CERN and he basically then mentions in the year 2000 he says that CERN is about to discover black holes and at this time CERN was just in the making a lot of people don't even know what CERN is basically the large hadron collider that's that's underground you know what I mean the thing's huge and he says that you know it's they're basically gonna try to discover how to make many black holes and today we all know we've heard about it in the news but back in 2000 I mean like who knew about that so that's the first big thing that really got people to start to pay attention to some of the things that John Teeter was talking about. And, you know, maybe, even if it is crazy, it sounds crazy, I mean, it's pretty interesting stuff. You know, so John, he posted online, he posted a bunch of pictures of his time machine. And uh, one, of the, one of the posts that he put up was supposedly from a cutout of the operations manual from his time machine. So he posted pictures of the actual time machine that he took with the camera, but he also took a picture of this cutout of an operations manual. And to this day, nobody can decipher like what it was. Some people think it was some type of like army radio or like some type of nuclear device, you know, some kind of nuclear testing device. But he talked about how the Americans wouldn't find weapons of mass destruction uh, in Iraq. 
He talked about a nuclear war in 2015, uh, basically from Russia, started by Russia. Um, he talked a lot about his future and how community really matters in the future and how he's pretty disgusted with us right now being in this timeline or 2000, how we don't really give a crap about anybody. Um, he talked about missing skyscrapers in New York. This is in 2000. He talks a lot about food being grown and sold locally and staying within the communities. He also talked about how China would put its first man into orbit soon, which happened in 2003. Oh, excuse me, it could be John. Yeah, it's him. Hello? Oh, it's Walmart. Okay, we'll pick that up. Thank you, bye. You never know, I mean, he could have told somebody at Walmart you know, a couple of years ago to call me on this day to save my life. Maybe I have some kind of importance. It's hard to say, really. I mean, only John knows. John also talked about mad cow disease. Uh, this is in 2000, 2001, he was talking about this, because he only posted for about three or four months on the internet. And the first reported case of mad cow disease was in 2003 from Canada. Uh, some Alberta beef there went bad, some cows were eating themselves or something. So, I mean, right there, that's another pretty crazy fact. So, you know, John Teeter, I know you're out there right now, you're probably watching, you know, you might be 18, 20 years old right about now, it's hard to say, maybe you're a bit younger. But I just got a couple of requests for you for when you do start to time travel. Um, first off, like, uh, if you run into President Johnson, tell him that Vietnam's a pretty bad idea, he should, he should pull back, yeah. You should probably do that. Um, also, John, for your sake, I hope your time machine doesn't run on uh, plutonium because things aren't well right now with the Libyans. And we know that you basically got to buy your plutonium from a group of Libyan nationalists who drive a hippie van loaded with AK 47s. Great Scott. Another thing I'd want you to look at if you can do anything to prevent the writer's strike, for the love of God, just hook us up here. So many shows go down the shitter because of that, you know. That's I think that's something you should consider. I know you're you're worried about community and nuclear war and stuff, but what really matters is television, and we all agree. So stop being an idiot. Um, and lastly, don't fuck with butterflies, because I don't care if it's a prehistoric one or one from three days ago. It's just a bad idea. Don't don't mess with them. We. we there's just something about butterflies and time travel, just leave them alone. It's Ryan, it's Ryan, spot of the week. It's Ryan, it's Ryan, spot of the week.
Marks made a list of the best albums in the history of the human being. Ah. Records we all should talk about. An album we could all listen to this week. Well, this is number 10, folks. We've reached the end of the desert island. We are at number 10. The Moody Blues, Days of Future Past. Is this their second album? It's hard to say. Was that first album that had Go Now and, and what was the other song? I Go Crazy. That wasn't even an album. That was just probably singles put together. So this could be actually the first Moody Blues album. And this is number 10. Holy shit, man. This is an acid trip. It starts in the morning and it ends in the evening. This is one whole day. Fucking Moody Blues, man. Okay, think of it. 1967. That's quite a year. You got a lot of good records. You got uh, three Electric Prunes albums out that year. The best Who album came out that year. All best Stones album came out that year. But this is the best album of 1967. This is truly. It just it rises above them all. The uh, production of Tony Clark on this album, I think, is the most meticulous production work. I think this album was done on a four track, which blows me away, because there's even an orchestra on this album. Fuck, Days of Future Past, but the Moody Blues, which incidentally includes, holy shit, that 39th best song in the history of the human being, entitled Twilight Time. And then right after that, number 40, the 40th best song in the history of the human being, is The Sunset, also from this record. Oh my God, 1972. It came out in 67, 1972 was the year I heard it. And I knew then, I knew then, seriously, I did. But holy shit, when I heard this album on LSD in 1984, this is, well, you know, I'm, I, it shouldn't be that drugs would solidify it, but the Knights of White Satin, which is the first single off this album, was banned from the BBC because Justin Hayward said, that song and this album was made by on LSD. I think every member of the band was on acid during production and recording of this album. So this is it, man. Fucking acid. 1967, a summer of fucking uh, mind expansion and a crystallized day in your life, in their life, in a life. What is life? The Moody Blues, Days of Future Past. Oh, one more thing i got to mention. Ha! The 63rd best song in the history of the human being is Tuesday Afternoon, Forever Afternoon. How could I have forgotten that? It's not just two songs from this album that make the list, but three songs from this album. And there's probably more. Even the song Another Day, hey, it, I can, it's burning. I can almost smell it. The Moody Blues name. Justin Hayward, John Lodge, Graham Edge, Ray Thomas, and Mike Pinder. Holy Mike Pinder wrote the best songs, man. Uh, ha! Man. man. The Moody Blues. Uh. Marks made a list of the best albums in the history of the human being. Ah. Records we all should talk about. An album we could all listen to this